and this is its stowed configuration. On the floor we have, and we're trying to change this, because uh, I don't think this is the best place, but uh, everything in the space station uh, world needs to be negotiated, and that's okay. We're not in a hurry, even though we're going fast. Uh, these are, our, this is our, our pond, or our wall of water that's down here. Uh, we have different kinds of water, and these are called contingency water containers, CWCs. And you can see different kinds. There's water that you can drink, and water that you can use for other things like flush water or generating oxygen. Now here's the airlock. Uh, as we go, the Quest airlock. I'll turn on some lights as we get in there. And uh, usually we're, we don't, uh, you know, go in here every day. Uh, we do try to uh, uh, keep it fairly clean, and I'm in the middle of doing an inventory for the, the 15A crew as they come up here. The airlock is with one of the few USOS, you know, American-style modules that uh, doesn't have a single light switch. You have to turn on every every light as uh, as you need. But uh, from here. Many, many EVAs, extravehicular activity spacewalks, have been conducted. Uh, there's, uh, in the back of this room, this crew lock is a, uh, is a hatch that goes outside into space. So uh, you can see that hatch right there. In the meantime, we're kind of store storing EVA-related things here. Uh, you can see this is a safer, which is uh, a kind of a jet backpack that uh, we wear on the outside of our spacesuits in case we get separated from the spaceship. We can we can fly our way back in. Uh, safer is pretty neat. The Russian spacesuits, which are many good things about them, but they don't have a safer. So uh, this is uh, all of our stuff as we're getting ready for uh, STS-119. You can see already starting a tool bag. Uh, usually, uh, again, everything's spread out more than it usually is, but we're putting together mini workstations for Swanee and Ricky and Joe as they get ready to go outside. So that's what the airlock looks like at the moment. Now, Node 1, originally brought up in, uh, on STS-88, Node 1 is getting kind of kind of crowded. And, uh, but there's also uh, a lot of place, uh, good places for storage. Here's our toolbox, one of my favorite places to go every day. And I have to go every day to the toolbox. We have a zero-g stowage rack. The kind of things we have in here are computer parts usually. We have some uh, lithium hydroxide canisters that the shuttle on here in case we have a shuttle contingency. We throw away all of our empty food containers in here. And as we float up on the ceiling, we have a lot of places where, where we keep our uh, office uh, kind of things, paper, pens, things like that, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, tools and scope meters and things like that. I remember being a Capcom on STS-96 when I first saw these sites. That's pretty amazing. Wireless access point. That's number one, we have three total. This is the pressurized mating adapter, PMA. And uh, inside, this is where we keep all of our clothes. Not all of our clothes, because we got a lot of clothes, but this is uh, a lot of our clothes, as well as other soft goods like hygiene items, uh, towels, wipes, shaving cream, shampoo, things like that. And now we're gonna fly run out of light. So I'm going to turn off the camera for a second and put on a light. Okay, back with you. I have a headlight on. Well, not on my head. It's actually on the camera. And we're floating into the Russian side of things. First and foremost, we are now in the pressurized adapter part of the functional cargo block. We call it the GAA. And it's also a docking port down below. As you carefully look down below, you can see the hatches, and inside the that what you can see in front of us is a uh, the docking mechanism for the Soyuz. The Soyuz is our launch vehicle. We uh, Yuri and I and Richard Garriott launched here. It's also our landing vehicle. We're probably Yuri and I are going to be landing in the in the Soyuz uh, along with uh, along with uh, Charles Simioni. Uh, right now, uh, it's our lifeboat in case anything goes wrong. So we have our, our lifeboat kind of things in here. 
our spacesuits are ready. We still have a little bit of unpacking to do, but uh, you can see things are really crowded in the FGB that we thought it's best to leave it in the Soyuz since we still have about two months before we go home. Two and a half months, actually. So this is the pressure, the living compartment, the bet o and it's a, a bit cramped in here. And we'll stop in the bet o on our way up, and we'll just keep diving down in here, and we'll get into our landing module uh, called the ESA, um, and this is the place where we sit for launch and landing. And this is this uh, Yuri seat right here. My seat is right over there. And we'll sneak down in a little bit more, but it's really cramped. And Sandy's seat is right over here. Okay, this is inside the ESA. And uh, you can see the Neptune panel. Glass cockpit, which is why this is the um, biggest feature between the new Soyuz TMA, well, it's relatively new, and the old Soyuz TM. The A stands for anthropometric and uh, means also the panel got smaller than the glass cockpit, so taller people could get inside. Uh, there's a window, that's my, my seat over there, a flight data file, our, our checklist ready for us, and you can hear a fan running because we're always keeping ventilation to it. We have a lot of stowage here in the in the GAA. Now Yuri's been busy unloading the progress. We just finished an EVA, so things here in the functional cargo block are very functional right now and very cargo-y. So you can see things are just really, really full here in the FGB. And again, you'll have to pardon us while we while we. Uh, while we get our things together as we rebuild the space station from the inside, Expedition 18, that's our job is to get ready for a six person crew. You can see there's a lot of uh, containers. These metal containers hold water or urine. And uh, that's what, uh, uh, right now a lot of these are waiting for a ride back in the progress. As we leave the FGB here, and go into the docking compartment. Docking compartment is another one of those vertical looks. And it's a kind of a misnomer. It's not just docking compartment, but it's also a airlock. So Yuri and I went out in our, these two spacesuits a few weeks ago and went into open space and had a spacewalk. Continuing on down through here, We'll stop here on the way back. Is our Progress cargo vehicle? The Progress is a cargo ship, unmanned, uncrewed, nobody driving. It has the same kind of docking compartment. It's very much based on the Soyuz design, except it doesn't have any re entry capability. So you can see it's all empty now. Yuri had emptied it out, and now we're going to get ready to, uh, to fill it up with a lot of the things that are in the FGB. 